Hi there, this is Carl Irwin. Let's make a wormhole. Okay, we have uh, this uh, section of the uh, video that we put out, this uh, short film that we made of space scenes dealing with uh, a wormhole, or, or you might call it a black hole. I think there's supposed to be a difference between the way they look. And we actually can make both of those kinds of images using the same process. It's just that one has uh, uh, fewer elements to it. Uh, but we're going to make this here. We can see uh, in the distance here in this shot, you start to see the outline of this lensing going on where it seems that space is kind of compressing on itself. Uh, and as this plays out, we get a little bit closer to it. So it's a three-dimensional image. We're closing in on it. Uh, here's another instance of it, a little bit closer. You can see the uh, various elements sticking out a little bit more. And then we move in really close on it. Uh, we're looking right here at the edge of it. Uh, and then as a bonus, there's uh, one other shot which seems to be related to this, um, but it's accomplished in a very different way. And uh, I came along this by mistake. It seems like uh, space is kind of being warped uh, and put into a wave sort of figure. This is a really, really simple shot, but uh, I, I thought it was pretty interesting and dramatic. So we may uh, take a look at that if we remember to do so. Um, but let's take a look at how this is put together. Now this is going to be a rig. Uh, this is going to be a rig that we're going to make that you can uh, use over and over again and, and, and you know move around your uh, camera in order to get uh, just the right shot that you want to or create any kind of motion that you want to. Now it's a rig in that it is a static kind of setup in that the camera will not be able to move around in space, but that you will be able to move around uh, the various elements to make it appear as though the camera is moving around in space. There are a lot of tutorials out there for generating uh, spherical objects that have the right materials, particularly inside of cycles. And I'm guessing you probably can do the similar kind of thing in Eevee. Uh, and you, you really could do something quite similar if you wanted to take the time to sort it out uh, right in the Blender uh, internal viewport as well um, using the OpenGL uh, GLSL. But we're not going to do that because I found that uh, generating a rig um, gets us there a lot quicker. Uh, and it's a lot easier to repeat to just save that rig off and, and have it available for later on. So um, we're going we're gonna to do it the, this way uh, for those reasons. So let's get started. We're going to get rid of our default cube and we're not going to need any lights. Um, actually, we are going to need lights, but, but uh, not to do lighting. We're going to use a light to create a mask later on. Uh, let's move our uh, camera to the top view. So we'll align the active camera to the view. And uh, what we need to do first is we need to bring in uh, an image of space, a background. And this is going to be a two-dimensional image. Uh, so we need to have the uh, uh, import image images as planes enabled. We've been using that a lot, and I use that a lot in, in a lot of projects that I do. Uh, and let's get an image of space here. So we need to find space images. And we'll use... Uh, our, our star field. This is a seamless texture. We'll use that one. It's probably good to use a seamless texture, uh, something that can be tiled and repeated uh, so that you can get the scale right with your star field. Uh, we want it to be shadeless. We also want uh, the alpha to be enabled, which I believe it is by default, and we want it to be set to straight because we're actually going to use the alpha transparency on this. So we'll import that image. And uh, we need to set uh, our view shading to texture. And we also need to enable um, the GLSL. And we'll scale this up to fill up the frame. Now, we're going to need to make this a lot bigger than the camera because we're going to be panning uh, and looking at this uh, image from different uh, perspectives. However, we don't want our stars to be quite this big, so we're going to take advantage of our scalable texture. We'll go to the material settings and the texture settings, and we will increase the uh, mapping size here. We'll set it to 2 on the X and on the Y, uh, so that gives us a little bit more to work with. Now, we can start to see the texture repeating. That's okay. We're actually going to bring in some other textures to make this a little bit more interesting. Uh, let's go to the next texture slot and we're going to add another texture and we'll navigate to our images here again and we'll pick another seamless texture that is going to be uh, I don't know probably one of these um, 
I don't know if we'll use one of these nebula textures or not. Mm, maybe we'll leave that out of it. We're going to grab the smoke texture, though. There's kind of a big smoke texture here that is also seamless. We'll open that up. Uh, and we're going to set this to uh, add blend mode. And we're going to scale it as well. We'll scale this to uh, 1.5. So it's a slightly different scale uh, from our star background, which will help us to hide the fact that we have repeating textures there. Uh, in fact, I might try to stretch this out on the x-axis a little bit. So maybe we'll set the x to uh, 1, but we'll set the y to 1.5. And uh, let's change the uh, color here a little bit, or rather the uh, influence. So we'll set the color down to 0 0.5 and see where that gets us. Maybe go a little bit lower, 0 0.2. So we have a little bit of this smoky kind of texture to it. Uh, let's see if we can get this to uh, uh, pop a little bit more by changing the contrast. We will enable the uh, uh, nodes. We'll open up a node editor. And we'll select our star field material. And then we will apply to this a uh, hue and saturation. I'm going to take the saturation down to 0 0.7, just get some of that bluish color out of it. Uh, and then we'll add to this uh, a color RGB curve. And we're just going to add a little bit of contrast. We'll darken it up a little bit. In fact, we might not even add some contrast. We might just darken it down a little bit. Uh, and that'll be good for right now. We just want to have a little bit of... Uh, 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 a little bit more of a darkness to it so that the stars pop out a little bit more. So this is going to be our space that we're going to be bending uh, uh, with our wormhole. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use some procedural textures, some Blender internal procedural textures to affect uh, this image to create distortion. Uh, now what we're going to do, however, is we're going to keep our camera locked in this position in terms of X, Y, and Z space but we are going to uh, allow it to rotate on any one of the axes, but we're not going to let it move in space. So we're only going to use rotation, and that will allow us to generate a distortion field right here in the center that will always be in the same place in the scene, and we will uh, be able to navigate around it or imply that we're moving around it by changing the rotation of the camera, uh, and then also by moving uh, the plane itself uh, to distort within that one field of distortion. So let me show you what that looks like. Uh, we're going to add very quickly, can uh, close this down here, we're going to add very quickly an empty, and we'll leave that right in the center, and this will be uh, what we use to anchor our distortion field. And then uh, on the star field, we're going to tab into edit mode, and I'm going to add uh, a couple of subdivisions to this, and so we'll subdivide it uh, a few times. Uh, maybe down to here. And then we will uh, go to the modifier uh, stack for this uh, image. And we are going to add a subdivision surface modifier. We're going to set it to simple. And then we're going to add another a modifier. We're going to add a, uh, let me find it on here, a displacement modifier. And we'll add a new texture. And to get to texture uh, 0 0.001, we'll just go directly from the modifier stack to the texture editor, and it should show up. And we want this to be a uh, blend texture. Now the blend texture that we're going to want is going to be a spherical blend texture. And we're going to set this to, uh, in our uh, modifier stack, to be uh, on the uh, on object coordinates, and as the object, we'll select the empty. And you can already start to see this distortion happening in the very center. Now, if we come out of our view, we'll see what's happening. There's actually a big spike right in the middle uh, of our image here, and that is the uh, texture, that blend texture being applied uh, with the empty as the coordinates to our object. Let's get some of these settings straightened out here. We're going to set our mid-level to zero. 
which should bring our plane back up to the uh, top here. We're going to decrease the strength to 0 0.5 for the moment, just to kind of make this a little bit more subtle. We'll come back to our camera view. Uh, what we want to do is we want to edit our texture a little bit so that we get more of a, a rounded kind of fall off to it rather than a spike right in the center. So we want to get um, distortion happening on the outside edges of this as if we're looking at a sphere that blends into the background. Now, you, um, you can do this with the X and Y directional uh, displacement, but when you start stacking up X and Y displacements, they start to cancel each other out. So the best way to get X and Y and everything in between all together is to use the normal direction. So you're actually making a, a three-dimensional um, displacement that is approaching the camera. It's coming at the camera. Uh, so let's change our texture settings a little bit. We'll go back to our texture settings and we're going to add a, um, a color ramp to this. We'll go to our black texture real quick and we'll just uh, get rid of the alpha. It's not going to change anything but it's just a little bit more consistent to work with it that way. Uh, let's take the white side of this, so the white texture or the white color, and we'll bring it in closer towards the black to increase our um, lensing on the outside. Now you can see that the geometry starts to show up and, and the way that we're going to smooth this out here is we're going to go to uh, our um, modifier stack real quick and under the subdivision we'll add a few more uh, instances of subdivision. So we'll increase this a few times. We'll go back to our camera view. Our, our subdivision uh, has made it such that our texture is occluding the edges, if that makes sense. So the field of view is too close to the camera. So what we want to do is we'll experiment with this. We'll, we'll take our empty and we'll increase the size a little bit so we can see a little bit better. And then we'll come back to our uh, texture settings. And we're going to move our white back a little bit so that we can start to see the lensing on the outside edge. We'll make this a little bit more stark. And then we will bring our black a little bit. Uh, actually, we'll leave our black alone. What we're going to do is we're going to change the influence that this has. We're going to bring this out closer to the camera. So let's go back to our um, modifier stack. And down here, we'll increase the strength, 0 0.6. We'll just increase this by increments until we get something really, really good. In fact, let's go all the way up to 0 0.7. So we'll get this to stick out pretty close to the camera here. Actually, let's go all the way to 1 and see what that does to our camera. So it's actually kind of inside the bounds of the camera a little bit. Let's back this off to 0 0.9. So that's pretty close now. It's sticking right out in front of the camera. We'll go back to our camera view. Uh, and then we'll come back to the uh, texture. And we'll bring the white back. So now we get a really, really stark representation. So what we're looking at is we're looking at a really, really strong lensing effect uh, that approaches the uh, uh, edge of this geometry, but it blends in. In fact, we might be a little too close. Let's go back to our modifier. We'll bring this down to 0 0.8. So the distance that we're going at changes how much the lensing looks. And this looks pretty good here. Maybe we'll try something in between uh, 0.85. So that looks, that looks pretty good right there, okay? So uh, we now have our lensing working. Now what we can do is we can change this. We can change the size of it a couple of different ways. We could try to scale our empty. So that's one way to do it. We can scale up our empty, but it will change our perspective quite a bit. Now in order to get a maximized uh, uh, lensing, we can scale down our empty to a point where we start to occlude the outside edges again. Uh, I think we had it right about where it was here. This is probably good. Now the better way to kind of zoom in on this is actually to change our focal length on our camera. So if we uh, change the focal length, we can get closer to it or further away. We're just changing the boundaries on the outside edges of our, our camera. 
Let's bring this back to uh, 35 for the moment. So shot by shot, you can use these different uh, methods to change your perspective. We'll leave it right where it is for right now. Uh, let's turn this now into a, a black hole sort of image. So we have the lensing going on, but we want the center to sort of disappear. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to make our background black in our scene. Uh, and we'll enable uh, for the moment right now in our display our world background. Uh, I want to add to this a light. I'm going to create a light. So a point lamp. And this is a shadeless texture. So the light won't affect it. But we're going to bring this right up to around where the tip of our distortion is at. And then on our uh, light, we're going to set a few settings here. We're going to enable sphere. We're going to bring the distance down to about 5, see what that gets us. So uh, that's where we're at. Now we're going to add another material to our um, space image here. So the material slot we're going to add is going to be a plain white material, and we're going to change this to Fresnel, and we want it to be absolute white. So we'll turn up the intensity and boost the color all the way up to white. Uh, and we're going to disable a specularity. We're not going to need the specularity at all. So you can either do this on the material itself or you can do this on the point light. In fact, it might be better just to do it on the point light so that it's not trying to calculate anything extra that we don't need. Now, if we go back to our uh, material here, we're going to label the material light mask. We'll go back to the star field uh, material, and then uh, in our node setup for that material, we're going to add our light mask material. So input, add a material, and for this material we will select light mask. We're going to use this now to affect the alpha. Now what we need to do is we're going to add to this a color uh, RGB curve and we're going to put our light material in there. And if you look at this, what it looks like as color, you can see what it's doing. If we go back to our camera view, you can see that we have uh, this kind of big white hole in there. This is the light uh, applied to that light mask material. I want to invert this. I want to see uh, white for everything else and I want to see black where the light is at. So this is what we have now. Now one thing we may want to do also at this point is on our material, on our object, we may want to enable smooth shading. I don't know that, that will affect too much, but we want to you know, not see a lot of a lighting geometry uh, when we get to this uh, uh, down the road here. So we're going to use this for a uh, alpha input on our object. So if we put our star field material in and then have this applied as an alpha, and then we turn on our only render, we can now see what we've generated. We've actually made uh, a black hole. So this is our black hole image that can be rendered uh, using uh, GLSL OpenGL rendering, and it, within that amount of time we have a full frame. In fact, I can turn up uh, our resolution to 100%, and you can see that it renders that quickly. Now we're going to of course spice this up and make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that the stars get a little too big here in the center and it's okay that we see this lensing going on around here but when the stars get kind of close to the middle we don't want to see them. It starts to look like a two-dimensional image uh, when we see that. So a few things that we can do uh, to improve upon this. We can go to our point light uh, and we can change our energy, maybe double it and that will make this a little bit more stark. Uh, we can also change our distance, maybe bump it up to six, uh, maybe even seven. A lot goes a very little way, as you can see here. Uh, and then maybe take our energy back down to one, kind of find a happy medium in here, 1.5. And I think we're, we're pretty close right there. Okay, so now animation at this point, if this was just going to be our black hole and this was all there was to it, we can animate the movement of this by animating uh, the rotation of our camera. So if I rotate on the uh, x-axis, I can rotate up and down uh, to make it appear as though uh, the uh, 
we're, we're moving around it. Now, the one problem that I'm missing here is that uh, I don't have the changing of the star field in the background. If I was moving around this, the star field would change perspective. Now, the nice thing about this is because the distortion field is connected to a point in space on that empty, I can actually take my uh, star field and I can move it and it will move around that distortion and you can see how it applies to it. So at the end of all of this we're going to generate a very simple camera move and make this move around. Okay, But you can see just how the controls work at this point. Uh, so let's undo what we just did. And uh, let's make this even better. Let's see if we can turn this into now a sort of a wormhole. Now a wormhole is something where we would be looking into it and seeing into uh, something now behind it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create another plane. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this plane, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to move it back behind it on Z space, so it's sitting behind. And then for these settings, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, reverse my perspective on my distortion. So I want the distortion now to be going the other way. So on this object, on Starfield 0.001, under my modifier stack, I'm going to change the strength to a negative uh, 0 0.85. Whoops. All I need to do is add a minus uh, figure in there. And now it's going the other direction. If I go back to my camera view, I'm now looking through it. Now if I select camera, my draw order is proper because I'm placing this object behind the one in front. So Blender knows to render my uh, top object first, and the alpha transparency will come out right now. If that is a problem, you can edit the draw order. I've d demonstrated how to do that on other tutorials. So look back, even in this series, you can look back. But you can parent your objects to an empty and then unparent them in the proper order with the foreground objects being first going to background, and it will set things up. Now, this texture blends in a little too much because it's actually exactly the same thing. So I want to go to Starfield 1, and then under that, material, my Starfield material, I'm going to um, click on this 3 so that it's its own material, it's a separate material. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the texture slot uh, for that. In fact, let me, let me disable the uh, nodes here for a second. We're going to change that too. Uh, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to change my image to a different one. So I might select a nebula. Uh, so let's go here, and for the texture, we will click on 2 to make it its own so we don't edit everything all together. And let me select here a new image. And let's get something a little bit more crazy. Let's go with uh, this one right here. So now we're looking at a very different image in the background. Now I might uh, change this so that it, go back to my camera view, might change this so it has a little bit different uh, kind of uh, uh, mapping. So let's come back to our Starfield 1 and we'll set this to 3 and 3. See what that looks like. Come back to the camera. So now we're looking through apparently to some other kind of uh, situation back there. Let me go back to Starfield 1 and uh, we'll go to our smoke and we'll just turn this off. And then inside of the node editor, now you'll see that it goes back to the wrong Starfield uh, because when I enable the nodes it's now seeking out a different, uh, a different image. So I have to go to my node editor and update that. So if we go to the node editor with this material uh, selected, I want this initial material not to be a star field, but now star field 1. So now everything should look right. Now I have my color uh, curves already applied to this. This is the one problem with um, uh, duplicating the, the material rather than creating a new one. But that's not a problem. I can uh, just re create all of this. I'm, I'm not going to need uh, any of this light masking so I can actually delete that. And if I come in here maybe we'll add just a curve adjustment or a color adjustment. 
Actually, I think I'll keep the saturation on that. Let's work with what we've got. So I like the saturation, taking some of the color out, but I don't like the curve. I'm going to boost up my curves a little bit, or I might add a bit more of a contrast, so some of the lighter stuff pops out a little bit more. And if we go back to our camera view, that looks a little bit better. It looks like I'm looking now into a different place, but it still resembles the kinds of stars that we're looking at in the front. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. All right, so uh, you could call this done. Now we're looking at a wormhole. We're looking through to the other side. But let's, let's one-up this even more. Let's make it even a little bit better. Let's say that we have some of the stars uh, kind of reflecting on the outside of this. We want to get a little bit more of a reflection passing over the top of our uh, material. So uh, let's go back to the first star field. We're going to add another material. Uh, and on this material, we're going to also make this shadeless. And we're going to add to it uh, just a star field. So I can actually select the star field that I already have in there. Uh, I'll click on this so that I don't edit the settings. So star field number two. And we're going to set our mapping uh, to a very, very high number. Let's say we set it up to about uh, 10. And now we're going to go back to our material, our main material. In fact, let's name this real quick. Reflection stars. And let's go back to our main star field material. And we'll go back to the node editor. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to see a reflection of stars on the top of all of this stuff. So we're going to have to map it a couple of different ways. Uh, I'm going to disable my alpha just for a moment so we can see what we're working with. And then we're going to bring in a new material. This new material is going to be the reflection stars material. And uh, I also want to make sure that our reflection stars is mapped to the proper UV map. And let's see what this looks like. Okay, very good. So you can see that we see a lot of the repetition going on out here, but right in the center, our stars look a little bit better. They look a little bit more correct in terms of size with, with respect to reflection. Uh, in fact, I want them to be probably even a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go back to my reflection stars, and I'll increase my map even a little bit more. Maybe take it up to 12. Maybe even up to 15. Let's go really, really tiny. So that'll do. Let's go back to our material in the node editor. Um, I want this to only apply in the area where we have the black hole. Okay, so that's what I want this to apply to. So what I need to do is I need to make a map of this. Let's add uh, a, a black and white map. Let's add very quickly a, uh, let's see here, a color, hue, and saturation. And I'm going to take the saturation all the way down. I'm going to add to this an RGB curve. And we want to darken up all the dark space around the outside. Maybe bring our lights up a little bit to get more contrast. So that should do it. So this is our mat. This is our mat that we're going to use. Now I want to blend this in with our light mask. So we'll add a color mix node. Again, you don't need to do this. We're just, we're just one-upping this. And I'm going to set this to subtract from our light mask. We'll end up with something like that. Uh, 
that didn't come out right. Let me uh, switch this around, add. There we go. Okay, so now we're adding on uh, this light color representing the stars of reflection onto our light mask. So it shouldn't remove them now from our, our image, okay? However, I do want to remove all of the stars from our image uh, on the spaces where I don't have um, our hole. So let's, let's see if we can figure this out here. We're going to apply this now as our alpha channel. We're going to bring in our other texture and now we see uh, the places here, these splotches, where it is keeping our color from our original material in place. I want to replace that now with stars that I have down here in my original material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to composite these stars on top of my original using the light mask. So if I add here a color mix node and I take my star reflection material and I put it on top of my original material and for the input I use my light mask let me reverse these now I can see what I wanted to see I can see my stars showing up from my reflection on top of my uh, um, other material now I might want these to be a little bit more faint so one thing that I can do is on the instance here RGB curve. I'll add an, I'll add, whoops, yeah, I could do that. I'll add an RGB curve to that. On the instance here of my light mask, I might darken it up just a little bit. Actually, the better way to do this, let me put that back in. Get rid of that. The better way to do this is actually to darken up the um, influence of our stars on the um, uh, alpha, alpha input. So let me add here very quickly RGB curve. This is a secondary one. We'll uh, darken this up just a little bit. And we'll see these other stars kind of fade out a little bit. So now what I have is if I move my uh, star field around, oh, one other thing real quick. I want to uh, parent my secondary star field to my first star field. You'll see why. If I hit shift, uh, or rather uh, if I just select my second star field and drop it onto the other one. Now here's why I want to do this. Well, no, wait, sorry, undo. There. I don't want to parent it. Instead, I want to use a modifier. So on my second star field, my background one, uh, this is going to give us three dimensions here uh, very quickly. I want to add a constraint. So I'm going to add a copy location constraint. And I'm going to set it to uh, my original star field. So the second star field is copying the location of the first star field. But I don't want it to uh, apply to the Z space. I want it to sit back in Z space. I only want it to apply to the X and Y. But I want it to invert the X and Y. So as I move, if I go back to my camera view here, and I get out of my node editor, come back to the camera, so uh, uh, we have now a problem because I unparented uh, that. Um, I parented and unparented my star field, so we'll fix that here in a second. Um, but what I, what I have now is when I take my first star field and I move it in any direction, my secondary star field is going to move in the opposite direction. Isn't that neat? So this creates a more of a lensing kind of perspective, more of a as if we're looking through a, a refracting object. And you can see here that some of these stars, these reflective stars, are passing through on the outside of the uh, skin here. Now I can increase or decrease that any, any amount I want to. Uh, I think it shows up a little bit more on the one that I did for the video, uh, but you can, you can change that any way that you like. 
All right, so that's pretty much it right there. We have uh, created our rig now. Now again, the camera will never move in space. The camera will just change its perspective uh, in terms of its uh, um, uh, focal length. Uh, and uh, the uh, zoom will be created by either increasing the size of our empty or changing the focal length on the camera. Uh, and then also moving around the object will be created by changing the rotation of the camera and then also by uh, changing the uh, X and Y location of our uh, planes here. Let's fix this transparency very quickly. If I select the first one, I don't have to fix my draw order on this. I can simply just go to the object settings and uh, click on transparent. And I think we're good to go now. So now the top one, is just, since we're not using anything else. Now if I added another layer, uh, I would want to probably set my draw order right. So I could add like a layer of smoke in there to make that look a little bit more interesting. In fact, we may do that here in a moment. Um, but let's, let's create a bit of a, a move here. Um, let's take our focal length and animate it. So we're going to set our focal length at 35. We'll insert a keyframe. We're just going to make this 120 frames. We'll go out to the end of our animation and we will increase our focal length. And we'll set another keyframe. And we'll open up a graph editor real quick. Hit V and select vector so that uh, we remove the F curve from that. Now we want to set a, a rotation of our camera. So let's say we're going to get our object to go from the right side over to the left side. So we'll take our camera and at the beginning we will rotate on the y-axis over to the left, insert a keyframe for rotation. We'll go to the end of our animation, rotate on the y-axis and set another keyframe towards the left, set a keyframe for rotation come down to the graph editor, hit V vector. So this is what we have so far. Not a whole lot going on. Now let's get this some, uh, let's make this look like we are moving around it. So we want to make it look as if we're moving around it from the left to the right. Now if we were moving around it from the left to the right, we would see less of this side of the background and more of this side of the background, which means that the star field uh, the top star field should be moving from our perspective from left to right. So let's uh, select the top star field, insert a keyframe for location. We'll go to the end of our animation and we'll move our star field over to the right. Good chunk. And we'll insert another uh, location keyframe and we'll insert, uh, or rather we'll hit um, V for the, in the graph editor and hit vector. So here's what our, our animation looks like. So we are forcing the perspective that we are zooming in on the object and moving from left to right around it. And now all of a sudden our object has three-dimensional space to it, even though the camera is not actually moving. So it's a rig. You have to kind of think through this a little bit. Now the benefits to doing it this way is that we always will have a very clear lensing effect on the outside edge and it will never it'll never get occluded. We will always see this fall off where everything gets compressed very starkly coming into the edge of that. And also the benefit of this is that you can see how fast it renders in OpenGL. I click on the button here and within a second I have a full resolution. I mean look at that. That looks really clean, looks really great. I have a fully rendered frame there. So that is how I generated um, this um, animation in my uh, movie. Uh, let's do one more thing. We're going to add some uh, smoke to the outside of this very quickly. So uh, let's import another image. We'll import a smoke image. And uh, we'll want it to be shadeless. And uh, I'm going to take this image and I'm going to set it just in front a little bit. And I'm going to scale it up quite a bit. Go back to the camera view. Okay, so uh, what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to go to the game engine. And we're going to go to the material and I want to turn on the add blend mode for this smoke. 
Uh, and then I'm going to go to my object settings and I'm going to apply the x-ray. Then I'm going to enable the uh, node editor on it. We'll open up a node editor. And I will select my smoke image. And then we're going to go to uh, the node editor. We're going to add a um, material. And for this material, I'm going to select my light map, my light mask. And I'm going to apply this as the alpha. And we'll add a color curve to invert it. Now on my uh, uh, smoke, I'm going to tab into edit mode, much like what we did before. I'm going to uh, subdivide it a few times, and then I'm going to add to it a uh, subdivision surface modifier, set it to simple. Uh, and then also I'm going to add the other modifier for displacement. I'm going to select my displacement texture, texture is, uh, 0 0.001. I'm going to set the coordinates to the um, object and select my empty. And I want to uh, have a very similar kinds of settings here to uh, the other one. So I'm going to set my mid-level to 0. And I'm going to select this, uh, set the strength to 0 0.85, just like it was before. And you can see that my smoke is not quite getting up there to the uh, top part. So let me increase the strength of this. Go back to the camera view. So now I can see that my smoke disappears in the center, but I can animate my smoke separate from everything else. Let me go back to my smoke here real quick, and uh, I want to select my uh, main material on the smoke. I'm going to darken it up a little bit. I could do this in the node editor. I could do it right here. Um, actually, let's do it in the node editor to be consistent. We'll add very quickly a color curve, RGB curve. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to darken down our smoke, make it less apparent. I'm not sure why that didn't quite work out. Oh, there we go. I didn't have my nodes enabled. Let me check my alpha input. For some reason that is not being applied properly. I'm not really sure why. Let's try this. We will add to this instead a mix node and for the color underneath we'll add black and for a light mask we'll put this into the factor and we will just reverse reverse everything. There we go. More than one way to skin a cat. Let's go back here to the camera view and now we have what we want. So we're getting a big hole now in the center of our uh, smoke layer. Let's enable everything else. Now the smoke layer is in its own place. It's in its own plane. It's actually sitting on top of everything else. So I can, if I want to, move my smoke in a different direction. In fact, right now it's not animated, so we might be able to just see what kind of interesting perspective we get. You can see that the smoke is moving along with our um, object here, which creates kind of an interesting perspective. Maybe what I will do is I will take my smoke layer and I will animate it a little bit. So it's moving slightly to the right. We'll insert a keyframe for location, then I'll go to the end. And I'll move it over just a little bit. Insert another keyframe for location. And we'll open up the graph editor, hit V for vector, take out all the F curves. 
And now we have a new animation. So we're moving in on the object, we're moving around the object, but this smoke seems to be kind of in the same plane as the object and is moving over it and off it and around it. It's being warped separately from the uh, star field in the background. So kind of an interesting little figure there. I think my smoke is a little bit too, um, a little bit too light. Let's go back to the node editor. Again, you don't have to do any of this stuff. We're just kind of playing around here at this point. Make the smoke a little more subtle. Uh, and I might go to my smoke layer and also increase my subdivisions because I'm seeing a little bit of extra geometry that I don't want to see there. All right, so here it is. Here's our final animation. We're moving a little too quickly again, as I said in some previous uh, tutorials on this subject. When you're going around space objects, you don't want to move too quickly because you start to do things that are really unrealistic for the scale of what uh, the object is supposed to be. Um, but anyway, this is how you can uh, create a wormhole sort of effect or a, uh, a black hole kind of effect without that uh, reverse lensing on there. You can tweak around the settings to make things a little bit more or less apparent, however you want to. Uh, but this is how I did it for that uh, short little film. Uh, one more thing I want to do very quickly here, and this is going to drive some of you nuts, and I'll do it just to drive you nuts. So we'll select everything here. And... We'll delete it. Uh, we'll rotate our camera back towards the center. Uh, we'll also go to our focal length. Uh, we'll clear keyframes. All right, um, I want to uh, show you one other idea you can you can do that's much, much simpler than that. If you're really, really close up and you just want to sh you know, show the warping of space, um, we're going to bring in uh, a, a star field again. Actually, I probably will use a nebula this time. Uh, so let's import another image as planes. And this time we'll grab, um, grab this nebula back here, make it shadeless. And uh, we want to go back to our, our render mode, internal render. We'll scale this guy up. And I'm going to a tab into edit mode, and we're going to subdivide this few times and then we're going to add uh, a modifier for a subdivision surface set it to simple then we're going to add another modifier which is also the uh, displacement modifier as before we'll add an empty as we did before and then on this uh, modifier We're going to add a new texture. We're going to set the mid-level to zero. We're going to set the, uh, set the uh, coordinates to object. We'll select our empty, just like we did before. But this time on our uh, material, texture two, we're going to uh, set this to a blend material as before. We're going to play around with the different kinds of blend materials. So uh, for this one, uh, we're going to use, instead of a linear one, Let's try a radial one. So this is a radial blend mode. It's kind of interesting, gives kind of a wave effect. Go back to our camera view. Uh, and let's move our camera a little bit here and get it into a different place. So we'll move up on the uh, Y axis. Maybe rotate it on the Z axis a little bit. And Z space and move it in kind of into this edge here a little bit. We'll rotate it on, uh, rotate this nebula now on Z space, and we get this really interesting wave sort of effect. Now you'd want to play around with, you know, the, the color, 
settings on this in the node editor, or maybe even map it a little bit smaller or whatever, but you can kind of see what you can do. You can warp space just by using basic uh, modifiers uh, and some textures, some procedural type textures. So I do have a, a shot in there right after the uh, neb uh, right after the uh, wormhole effect where I do this kind of thing. It looks pretty interesting. Now, I did a lot of other VSC compositing um, uh, tricks, and we're going to look at that next. So the next tutorial that we have, now that we've covered how to deal with nebula, we've covered how to deal with planets, We've covered uh, this wormhole kind of effect. Uh, we're going to look at some compositing tricks that you can do inside of the VSE to just kind of make everything look a little bit uh, better and sharper and cleaner and more interesting and add some light effects, uh, some lens flare, things like that. So anyway, um, that is the wormhole uh, shots. In a nutshell, you can make this rig and save it off and uh, use it again anytime that you want to for any projects that you want to. So uh, good luck with this, and I wish all of you happy blending.